What's good YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dylan and this is how to upgrade your old MacBook Pro. So for all of you guys out there that are just like me, you're rocking an old laptop but are too broke to purchase a new one, here are three budget friendly upgrades that I definitely recommend you doing. Number one, this is by far the most important because if you were rocking an old laptop, chances are is you have a mechanical hard drive in your system. These are super slow, but now that we're in 2018, I mean, solid state drives are so much faster. They're a lot cheaper than they used to be. And once you have one, you can honestly never go back. Personally, what I did with my MacBook Pro was I don't actually use the CD drive. So I actually moved my old hard drive into there to keep it as storage, but kept the SSD as a boot drive. Basically in name and terms, all it does is make sure that your computer boots up super fast. It allows you to boot your program super easily and just accessing whatever you need to on your SSDs is that much faster. So that's number one, definitely get an SSD. If you are too broke to afford anything else, this is the upgrade I highly recommend you doing. The second most important thing that I definitely recommend is purchasing a new battery. Reason being is Rachel and I work a lot on the go. So having a laptop that will actually survive your work session is pretty essential for us. And I mean, when you're at coffee shops in an airport or whatever, outlets aren't always guaranteed to be there. You know, so making sure that your battery actually has, can hold a charge is actually pretty essential for us. And that's why battery would be the second most important thing that I would recommend purchase upgrading. Oh my God, what am I saying? Whatever. All right, let's go on to number three because I always want to get this done. And lastly, because we're going to be doing more heavy work and a lot of the programs that are being created nowadays need more RAM is to upgrade your RAM. So from the Apple spec sheets, it actually says it only supports up to eight gigabytes, but after reading a couple forums, it does say that you can upgrade to 16. At the time of doing this upgrade, I was still really broke, so I am just I just purchased eight gigabyte. Uh, last note before we get into the tutorial is that I believe they ended it in 2012 where MacBooks were upgradable. Um, I mean, the SSD battery RAM thing, I recommend that for kind of pretty much any laptop, but as for MacBook Pros, I believe it is at up until 2012 where you can upgrade it. So as long as you have a computer older than 2012, uh, this will work for you. The guys that I followed are actually from ifixit.com. It's a great website, not sponsored, but I definitely recommend you check that out so that you can make sure you got the right specifications for your laptop. Nonetheless, we'll just get right into showing you how to upgrade your laptop. So first off, my apologies. This was filmed maybe over three months with two different lap, two or three different laptops. Um, trying my best to make sure that it's a flow that you can follow through. But this is something I, I definitely recommend for a lot of MacBook users out there. So as for parts to upgrade, uh, the ones that I will be personally be using is about four things. It is a new battery, a eight gigabyte RAM kit, a new solid state drive, and lastly is a hard drive caddy that replaces the optical drive. As for tools, there's gonna be about three screws that you need. So the screwdrivers that you're gonna need is a Phillips double zero, a tri-point Y0 screwdriver, as well as a T6 torque screwdriver. Next, you need a plastic sponger or a guitar pick, and that's pretty much it, and we're good to go. So first off is you wanna flip your MacBook over so you can see the back. Most of the times I recommend doing this off top of a t-shirt or something soft so you don't scratch it up. But because it's seven years old, it doesn't really matter that much. And now we're gonna take that Phillips double zero screwdriver and take out all of these screws. So when I work on these, I usually like to keep my screws in order because there are different types of screws on the back. But in case you don't keep them in order, I'll tell you what they are. There's four shouldered screws at the very bottom. They got this little edge thing. There's three long screws in the top right. and the top left, the left and the right, you got really short screws. You'll notice that these are different from the shoulder screws at the bottom. So you wanna make sure they're separate. Now all you gotta do is take off the back and simple as that, you're inside your MacBook Pro. We're gonna go from the easiest upgrades to the most difficult. And the first off will obviously be the battery. Now, even if you are replacing the battery, I definitely recommend disconnecting it from the logic board because you don't wanna to touch any electrical components while there's power running through them. So the way that you wanna remove these connectors because they're pretty fragile is you wanna use that spudger. You pretty much wanna walk it out from your left to your right and just wiggle it out slowly until the connector can come out. Now to replace the battery, it's actually not that difficult. All you need is to take out those two screws. You're gonna need your tri-point Y0 screwdriver for this. And same thing, I always like to keep everything in order, but in case you don't, make sure that you're taking out the long screw on the right and the short screw on the left. 
All you gotta do is pull on that clear tab and the battery should come just right out. Now what you would do is just simply put in your replacement battery, put back in those screws. Remember the long ones on the right and the short ones on the left. Next is my favorite part of the upgrade. This is actually the most fun is just simply upgrading the RAM. So to take out your RAM, all you have to do is push out these gray levers and the RAM should pop straight up. This will happen one at a time, so just make sure you take them out slowly. And what you'll notice when you're taking out the RAM is that there's like a divider in the middle. So you can see that there will be a long side on the left and then a short side on the right. So to install your new RAM, you're just pretty much reversing the steps. Take your first RAM and slide it into the bottom slot. Just push it down until you hear it click. After that, you can get the other one and do it once again. Slide it into the slot and then push the RAM down. Then you'll hear it click and bam, you're done. You upgraded your RAM. Next up is taking out the mechanical hard drive. This is just at the bottom left hand corner and this one's also really simple. You'll see a black bracket with two Philip double zero screws. All you gotta do is loosen that up and take the bracket out. Just note that the screws don't actually come off the bracket. So all you gotta do is loosen it and then you can pull it out. With the bracket out, just tug gently on that mechanical hard drive. I believe there's a clear tab. But just be very careful because it's still attached to a ribbon cable. You don't want to rip it, so just do this slowly and then you'll be able to take that ribbon cable out. Next, you're going to want to take your T6 Torx screwdriver to take out the four mounting brackets that are on the mechanical hard drive. We're going to keep these four screws and put those screws into the new solid state drive and just reverse your steps. Plug in the ribbon cable, put the hard drive in, and secure it with the black bracket with those two Philip double zero screws. Now comes the most difficult part. Your laptop is actually fully functioning at this point. If you don't want to replace the optical drive, you don't have to. Uh, all you have to do is just reinstall Mac OS onto your laptop. But because I don't use my CD drive, this is actually a great place for me to keep some additional storage. So we're gonna be taking out the optical drive and putting the old mechanical drive into this caddy. But the way that we do this is gonna take a couple steps, so bear with me. First off, we're gonna to wanna to disconnect these wires. There'll be three black ribbon cables. So you're gonna do the same thing we did with the battery connector is just take your spudger and carefully walk these things out. Now that those three cables are out of the way, you'll see another one that's got the silver connector and you're gonna to wanna to tug on that very lightly parallel to the laptop. Reason being, it's just really fragile. So just carefully pull that out and you'll be able to put the cables to the side. Something to note here is that fat black cable is usually adhered to the laptop. So you just wanna be very careful when you're moving that cable. It's really fragile, so just take your time with it. With that fat black cable out of the way, you'll be able to see another thin black wire with a silver connector to it. Same thing with the other one, just tug on it lightly and it should be able to come out. Now with those cables out of the way, we can actually disassemble the speaker setup. So the way that we do this is there's actually five screws and you're gonna need your Philip double zero screwdriver for this. There'll be two long screws on the left, a medium kind of length screw on the right, and then two short ones right underneath where that fat cable was. Once you've taken those screws out, the speaker should be able to come apart and just put that to the side as well. Congratulations, I believe this was the most difficult part. So all you have to do now is take out the optical drive. To do that, there's three screws holding the optical drive in. There'll be two on the left, one on the right, and it's the same thing with the Philip double zero screwdriver. Simply take those out and you'll notice that there's a little connector as well as a ribbon cable. Take those out because we're going to put them onto the hard drive caddy. So to simply prepare your hard drive caddy, you take in the old mechanical hard drive, slide it into the caddy that you purchased. There are several options on here. Some of them have screws to tighten it, um, but mine only had one. And the main thing that you want to do is essentially just make sure that it doesn't move and that the hard drive is connected to the SATA port inside the caddy. Once you're sure that's secure, make sure that you take that connector you got from the optical drive and put it onto the caddy and also take that ribbon cable and put it on. Congrats, that's pretty much the end of the whole tutorial and now all we got to do is reverse our steps. So just put the hard drive caddy back into the place where the optical drive was, put those three screws in and connect the cable. Now you can take that speaker system, reassemble it, and put those five screws back in. Remember, two long ones on the left, a medium length screw on the right, and two short ones right in the middle. Attach that silver connector, attach the thin black cable, and attach those last three ribbon cables. Make sure that everything's connected and we didn't leave anything out. So now that we made sure that everything's connected and we didn't move too many things out of place, all you gotta do is connect the battery back in and close up your laptop. If you didn't keep order, just remember it's the four shouldered screws at the bottom, three long ones in the top right, and on the top left, the left and the right are very short screws. With all of our upgrades in, we're pretty much good to go and start installing macOS.
You're gonna to wanna to boot up to macOS Recovery to reformat your SSD and install macOS onto it. That being said, all you have to do is wipe your mechanical hard drive and you're ready to boot up your laptop. So personally for me, I kept my SSD as a boot drive and I rerouted my home folder, my user folder, into the mechanical hard drive. That way I could keep storage on the hard drive and I can keep the boot system and all my applications on the SSD for faster processing. Comment down below if you need a video for that. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.